Yo, what's happening? Okay, so we've had time to digest. Yeah, 24 hours later, you know me already. I like to soak it in, look at the result, listen to the punditry, and then take it from there. What we can see is that both of our teams have got shortcomings, yeah? We've got shortcomings, both Chelsea and Liverpool showed yesterday why we're as far back as we are when it comes to the title race but you know what I'm gonna I've decided I'm gonna try to take the positives from this result I'm gonna try my best yeah because there's a lot there's a lot of things that happen in this game a lot of predictable things as well things that I told you were gonna happen but let's just start with the beginning of the match money on as Pinaqueta. Let's start there. Right. Now, how I look at this is I look I'm looking at it from two different points of view. In today's refereeing, today's rules, it's a red. And yeah, it's a red all day. Mane took him out. Mane knew what he was doing. Let's be clear about that, yeah. I've heard a lot of Liverpool fans making excuses for him. But Mane, any of us who have played, yeah, any of us who've played the game, played striker, I've played forward, I know when I'm leaving one on someone, beginning of the game. You know, that's what you do. Beginning of the match, your manager will always tell you, listen, make the defender know that you're there. Yeah? Leave one on him, but try and, literally, if you're going to do that, do it at the start of the match. Mane knew what he's doing. Mane didn't look at him, but knew he was there. Mane never put his elbow back and tried to take out man's eye socket. But he knew he was there. He knew he put an extra bit of sauce <laughs> on that confrontation. But at the same time, it's so early in the match. You don't want to see a man sent off after six seconds. So I get why the referee didn't send him off but it's a red in today's game in today's game it's a red card i'm glad he didn't get sent off and like i said if you're gonna do it that's the time to do it so we move on the game now now to me this is this is chelsea were better than us yesterday overall right let's let's be honest with this game chelsea were better than us overall we had players missing so yes, we can lean on that. We had players missing, but Chelsea were better than us. Where they weren't better than us, the area that I'd say they weren't better than us as clinical was up front in, in terms of what we did in the first half. Second half, we had a few chances, but we, we could have done a whole lot better. But the key to this game was the midfield. We were using the high line again Again, I keep complaining about this high line. If you're going to do the high line, you need legs in the midfield. You need the engine room to be tight. You can't do the engine room with Milner and Henderson. And Fabinho, because Fabinho's not, he's not fast. Fabinho's not quick. Milner's not quick. Henderson is average. Therefore, there's no pace in there. Angolo Kante was absolutely taking the piss yesterday. And I knew he would. I would have rather Jorginho was in there. When Kante's in there, it's problems. And Kovacic is a decent player. He can use both feet. He's good at controlling the tempo of the game. He's good at just linking up the play. Yeah, so Kovacic... How, think of it like this. How the hell can two midfielders outdo R3? Think about it. You know what I mean? Milner is what, 38 now. We can't rely on Mil I love Milner, yeah? When he came to the club, I'm not going to lie. I was like, what the hell are we buying this guy? Like, why are we bringing this guy in? I have to eat those words. Milner has been a great servant to the club. But now, he needs to move into the coaching staff. Yeah? Let's be, let's be honest. You've got to be ruthless. Man's got to move to the coaching staff. Yeah? Um, Hendo. Hendo can't... Listen... Hendo is decent in the sense of if he's sitting next to someone else and he can just spray balls, 
pass a bit. Control the game. He can do that. But he can only do that if he's got um, someone like Genie with him. And Genie's not there. So when you're relying on Milner to do it and Fabinho, it's not going to work. Fabinho cleans up. Henderson can do the spraying. But Milner is not going to be able to run up and down like how he used to. Milner's getting spun these days, yeah? And it's no embarrassment. The guy's 38. It's no embarrassment. But it's time that he's got, he's, he's got to be switched now. We've got to switch it up. We've got to change it. So, to me, that was the key to the match. The midfield. The midfield weren't... We, didn't, we never had control of the match. And the difference between us this season and us in seasons gone by, we've normally taken the lead and then we control the game. We take the lead, control the game, get the second goal and it's lights out for the other team. We're not controlling any matches at the moment. The Leicester game should have been three points for us. We didn't control that game. We ended up losing. We didn't control um, the Brighton match. We didn't control the Brentford match. We didn't control the Tottenham game. All of these games, we're not controlling them. And then we're getting clipped every single time. We've lost about 15 or 18 points because of this. Like, it's, it's, it's not a coincidence. It's not a coincidence. So, these are where I think we need to sharpen up. We need to get someone in, um, in this January transfer window. I don't think we are. But I said it already in my last post. If we don't adjust, make these adjustments, forget the title. The title race is technically, if you're looking at form at the moment, you could say it's over. Who's going to catch City? You know what I mean? Who's going to catch them? But when you look at how Arsenal played against them on Saturday, Arsenal took it to them and they were cracking. If Arsenal were, were more clinical, Arsenal would have taken the three points. Martinelli should have scored. It would have been 2-0. City weren't coming back. City weren't coming back. But instead, they didn't finish them off. And that was it. The problem that we've got with Man City at the moment is what we used to have with Man United years ago. Where teams are not trying it with them. Teams are literally conceding that they're going to lose. And they're not, they're not attacking. They're not fighting them. And therefore... Man City already stick the pressure on you, wear you down. And with them, they are ruthless. So when they are on you and pressing, they will score. Like what they did with Arsenal once Arsenal went down to 10 men. So these are the things, these are the little key things that make the difference in a title running. With regards to us now, Salah's gone, Mane's gone, African Cup of Nations. kate has gone, not really much of a loss to be honest with you, with Keita. But Salah and Mane, that's already, what? Let's say 30 goals. Yeah? Off the table. And I'm not saying they're going to score 30 goals while we're gone. I'm saying it in terms of what they do per season. They're, they're gone now. So now, we've got to look at Taki. We've got to look at Ox. We've got to look at Origi to kind of fill in and do a job. I don't know how we're going to get through these next couple of games. I really don't. I'm almost hoping that Egypt and Senegal get knocked out early so these men can come back. But again, going back to the game. Go 2-0 up. Do you know, I've seen Salah score three world-class finishes and not won any of those games. Three goals that you just are like, what the hell? The Man City goal that he scored should have won that game. This goal against Chelsea should have won the game. And it's like all that hard work, go 2 0 up. Yes, we were lucky to be 2 0 up. But once you go 2 0 up, you've got to see the game out to half time. You've got to see the game out. If we go in 2 0 up, Chelsea have lost. I'm convinced. We would have just nullified the state. The stadium goes quiet. We control second half. We control the game, and then, literally, it's a wrap. 
game down three points. Instead, we literally gave up the lead. They come back. And then we were on, well, then the game was on a knife edge. But it should never have been like that. It should never have been like that in the first place. So for me, second half, Salah had a couple of chances. That shot against Mendy was on point. Mendy was, you know, he had a mixed game. But the point is, we don't look super sharp up front if Salah's not on form. Mane scored in this game, but I'm still not happy with Mane. Yeah, I, you can't keep going on a 10-game barren spell. He's got previous on doing this. You can't keep going 10 games, no goals. 10 games, no goals. Then you score in a flurry, then you go 10 games again, no goals. It's not about the build-up play now. If we, Man City, Bernardo Silva does the build-up play, scores. Sterling, build-up play, scores. Mares, same thing. Gabriel Jesus, not as prolific, but does the same thing. Rodri come up with a goal the other day. De Bruyne scores every other week. It's like they've got six or seven killers all the time. With our team, if you neutralise Salah and Mane doesn't turn up, Jota is brilliant, but he'll go on a run and then for a couple of games, he won't score and then he'll come back again. But we need to have killers every single game. And this is why I don't think we'll win the title this season. I'm the most optimistic Liverpool fan you will find out there. But I'm also one of the realists. And I look at my team and I see what we can, what we can, what we can and can't do. And I'm looking at it. I'm looking at Champions League and Carabao Cup. I think we could still do a cup double. Because when it comes to a one-off match, no one can't test us in that sense. We will blow you away. And everyone's afraid of us. Everyone, including Man City. They're afraid of us in a one-off. I don't know if we can do a run in the league consistently. But what I do know, over two legs in Europe, over two legs um, in the Carabao Cup against Arsenal and then the final, we can do that. We can do that. So I'm predicting we'll get to the final of the Carabao Cup because, by Jesus, I don't... If we lose to I don't know what to say If we lose to Arsenal I don't care That their team is Inspired and reinvigorated That Arsenal team Should not beat us Yeah We, we literally Oh god If Arsenal Then again The boys ain't gonna, I don't know I feel sick If Arsenal win But I think we can make The final If we're playing Chelsea In the final I'm a little bit worried if we've got Tottenham, I think we'll take them still. Despite Conte being there, I think we can take them in a one-off match. But then the Carabao Cup is not the achievement for the season. So we need to win the Champions League or at least get to the final. If we get to the final of the Champions League, to me, that's still a successful season with a Carabao Cup, Champions League final and second to third in the league. I think that, that's a decent return. Consid and... To be honest, when I'm saying second or third in the league, I'm talking about that we go on a run right now, that we still make it a little bit of a contest right to the end. You know, I'm not fully giving up on the title, but I don't, my confidence isn't actually, my lack of confidence, sorry, is not really to do with us. We, we've shown that we could go, we could go 10 games straight, 10 straight wins, 30 points. We've shown in the past we can do that. That's not my concern. My concern is that the other teams won't turn up. And, and that's my concern. Like, a Wolves, uh, you know, Burnley, all these lot, they don't turn up when it comes to Man City. They don't take the points. The only people I think will take points of City again, right now, I think Tottenham will take points of them. I think Southampton could do it. And I think, yeah, I, 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 we'll take points off them, I think. Chelsea will take points off them. But I don't think there's enough games left and enough teams of the higher calibre to take points off City to stop them winning the title. That's my concern. So, yeah. But overall, this game, it was a crap result for both teams. We needed to beat them. We win our game in hand now. It's eight points. Right now, 
if we can keep in the game, if we can keep in the game, win our game in hand, keep winning matches, and we're eight points behind, by the time we play them, and we can hit them, take three points, drop it down to five, anything can happen. Anything can happen. But we need to stay in it now. We can't have no more draws. We can't have any more stupid defeats. We need to murk teams and, and shut the game down. Ruthless. Take the points. Performance ain't... It's not about the performance right now. Right now, it's results. Right now, it's results. We need to... Even if we play crappy football and scrape a 1-0, it's better we do that and stay within touching distance of City than we play beautiful again. Team does a low block. We lose or we draw. You know, to a Brighton or, you know what I mean? But that's my opinion. The game yesterday was brilliant from a neutral perspective. But I hated it in the sense that we were 2-0 up and we gave up a 2-0 lead. And to me, at the bridge, a point back in the day at the bridge would be a decent result. But we should have smoked them yesterday. You know, they were there for the taking. No Lukaku. There for the taking. Let them come back. But anyway, let me know your thoughts at the bottom. Let me know your predictions for the title. You still think we're in it? I still think we're in it. Barring we keep we win all the rest of the games now. I still think we're in it. But yeah, let me know your thoughts on that. I'm gonna do the Carabao Cup preview probably tomorrow, maybe later tonight. And yeah, I'm out. I'm out. Peace. <laughs>